good morning and welcome everyone to the episteme 9 uh, it is an online international conference to review research on science technology and mathematics education uh, episteme is a flagship conference in science education research organized by the homi bhava center for science education uh, tifr and this conference is ninth in the episteme row but uh, Episteme 9 is unique in some sense because this is also the first fully online Episteme conference. And as a co-convener, myself, Deepa Chari, and my colleague, Ayush Gupta, uh, we are very proud and equally excited that we uh, have gathered around us participants who will experience an enriched science education research discussion space uh, which is essentially made available through the uh, Episteme 9 for next five days. Uh, today is our uh, welcome session and the first day of this international conference. And uh, before starting the actual program, uh, we would like to start with uh, by expressing our sincere gratitude to all the plenary speakers, uh, to the speakers, uh, which involves oral as well as poster presenters, uh, all the conference participants, reviewers, uh, all the session chairs and moderators who really um, helped us to design the program, how it appears as of today. And also thanks to the large team of HBCSE, including our advisory committee members, local organizing committee members, our proceeding team, our review management committee, uh, our mentors, and many other people who, uh, without which the event wasn't just possible. Uh, so today's welcome fun function, firstly, uh, involves an address by our center director, Professor Arnab Bhattacharya, uh, who will share uh, the history of Episteme Conference and followed by that, Ayush and myself will share more specific detail about uh, what was our region behind Episteme 9. So without any delay, now I invite our center director, Professor Arnab Bhattacharya to welcome you all for the conference. Thank you. Uh, uh, over to you. Thanks Deepa. So welcome to Episteme 9. And since this is an online conference, I should say not just good morning. I don't know where you are all watching from. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever in the world you are. And thank you so much for joining us for Episteme 9. So on behalf of HPCSE, the Homi Bhabha Center for Science Education, I'm delighted to welcome you all to this now, what Deepa said is a flagship conference on STEM education that is hosted by us periodically it's the conference especially happening in India in this particular field. And this year's Episteme conference is of course kind of different because it's being hosted virtually. And that means that I am actually a little sad uh, that we can't welcome you to our tiny but we, what we think is a very beautiful and green campus. In fact, what you're seeing behind me is not a virtual background, it's actually a uh, the greenery that surrounds us and you know while it can rain like crazy in Mumbai in there is a certain charm of the Mumbai monsoon that we would love to have you experience if you were with us over here but anyway welcome albeit online so this is the ninth in the series of epistemi conferences this series started off way back in 2004 uh, with the first conference that was actually not held at HPCSE. It was the other outlier in the series. This one's online. That one was actually held in Goa. That's where it started. Of course, after that, uh, the conferences moved to the HPCSE campus, and we've had them pretty much at two-year intervals, mostly around Jan, February in the winter, where Mumbai is really a very nice, pleasant time at that time. And uh, every edition of Episteme has brought together uh, leading scholars from across the world, across India, uh, you know, leading scholars in STEM education in the field who have given us overviews on what directions are, you know, currently being pursued, uh, what are, what is the progress happening in uh, science, technology, mathematics, design, etc. education areas. For the Indian community, this has been proven to be a really valuable meeting point. Uh, it's been allowed us to nurture a very small research community in STEM education in India, and it's provided a forum. It's provided um, this ground for uh, academics, teachers, people in curriculum development, people in policy. It's brought together people and 
allowed them not only to listen to the cutting edge of what is happening, but also allowed them to forge linkages that have lasted well beyond the conference, both within the country as well as beyond the country. So I was looking through the past epistemi, uh, you know, the, the list of conferences, and it's fascinating to see, you know, uh, speakers who are very young researchers in epistemi one, uh, and maybe, I don't know whether they presented a poster or something, today they're giving a plenary talk at epistemi nine. And I think this is one of the, it shows that this conference has really, you know, made its mark in the Indian context. So epistemi, every conference has had uh, a sort of special theme within this overall uh, area of science and STEM education. Uh, so for example, Epistemi 6, it looked at uh, emerging uh, computational media in science education. Um, so, you know, uh, and, and this Epistemi is, is no different. We continue this tradition looking at a very important theme, which is of equity equity in access, equity in opportunities in STEM education. So I think this epistemi is gonna stand out for looking at one of the really difficult problems uh, that all of us need to uh, worry about. Of course, uh, as the conference picked up, the first three were sort of, uh, you know, epistemi one, two, three by four, we had this very beautiful logo. I hope you've looked at it. Uh, look at all what's hidden in it. Uh, we had this unique logo and, uh, you know, over the next few days, I'm sure you'll be listening to lots of wonderful talks and have a really good time here. Now, I'd like to particularly give a shout out to Ayush and Deepa and the team of organizers, reviewers, and all of them who've, in spite of various constraints, you know, disruptions due to the pandemic, uh, you know, we've, we've had debates of when should we do this conference? How should we do it? But at the end of it, they've really been able to put together an eclectic mix of wonderful talks and posters exploring different dimensions of STEM education. And I'm sure we're going to actually in a treat over the next few days, exciting deliberations. I hope we're going to have some fantastic learning experiences and uh, you will be with us. Uh, we've tried our best uh, to choose time slots that sort of should make it reasonably okay for people, no matter where they are to at least attend some parts of this without having to stay awake all night, right? So apologies if you had to wake up early morning for the this session or stay back very late. Uh, but I think the rest of the conference you'll find is not too, too difficult. Uh, of course, before I end, I must thank uh, the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, TIFR, our parent institution for their support. And this support has been vital. It's enabled not just this epistemi, but all the past uh, series of conferences to happen. Without that, we would not be in this situation today. So we are, we are always thankful for the support that we get from them. And again, while we can't offer you the hospitality of the HPCSE campus, uh, I do hope you have a very pleasant experience in this epistemi. So on that note, welcome once again, and over to you, Ayush and Deepa, uh, to take us ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arnav, for the uh, speech as center director. Um, so now I welcome Professor Ayush Gupta, co-convener of epistemi, to welcome you all and share our vision about this uh, particular epistemi, which is epistemi 9, the fully online uh, conference uh, in the epistemi series. So Ayush, over to you. Thank you, Deepa, and welcome everybody. Uh, when Deepa and I started thinking about the conference, there was a time that we were like thinking about, you know, what, what special focus should we really take for the conference? And one of the places where we landed was thinking about like, what are really challenging problems uh, in our field uh, that have been talked about, but uh, um, we are still to make a lot of progress around those issues. And so two of the themes that uh, stuck out to us were one on equity and the other on research to practice. And I just wanted to share a little bit about our vision for what these terms mean, because uh, they also mean different things to different people. So for equity, what we understand it as, our understanding is efforts to address historic and ongoing um, inequalities and injustices in our society. Often these are structured along social category lines that uh, we are quite familiar with, uh, such as gender, race, caste, um, economic status, national status, citizenship, disability, and so on and so forth, right? And uh, one of the symptoms of this equity has been uh, the idea of representation, 
right? Like who is at the table? And oftentimes what has happened is, uh, well, there are two kinds of things. One is that the large part of research in STEM education still does not uh, attend to equity. We keep talking about students' ideas about XYZ topic without, or students' excellence in XYZ topic, their ability to do science without actually attending to what is the so social location from which these students are coming from. Uh, are students from other social location having access to these spaces? Are teachers from other social locations having access to these spaces? So <clears throat> there is the question of who is at the table. But one of the problems that has happened also is that equity has gotten reduced to this idea of who's at the table. And uh, the danger there is that we miss out on the kinds of disciplinary practices in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics that actively keep out people. Institutional policies, again, that are structured so that people are kept out of these uh, STEM spaces, or if they find access to those STEM spaces, they find it very hard to stay in those STEM spaces. They are kicked out of them, right? Um, and the cultural uh, sort of like disciplinarity that sort of like happens in terms of when people uh, from marginalized locations are trying to assert themselves, they are disciplined into conformity, right? These are all aspects of equity. And so equity ultimately has to look at power and it has to look at the people in power and challenge them so that we can have a better, a more equitable space. So that was one kind of an idea. The other idea is research to practice which is translating what we have learned from research into practice. Oftentimes, this has been restricted to the idea of teacher education and teacher PD, right? teacher professional development. And I think it's time for us to expand that beyond that. Right? Here's one idea where research and practice, research to practice and equity should not be seen as two different themes, at least in our minds, they are joined together because research on equity should inform how the practice of teaching and learning is happening. At the same time, the idea of research to practice should inform how we engage with equity, not just in the fields of our research, but also in our institutions, in our professional communities, right? Like even if we look at the current epistemy, we should be concerned that we don't have enough representation of folks from marginalized locations, not only from India, but across the world, right? And so think about these two ideas, research and practice and equity together. And in some sense, try to, you know, like our hope is that the conversations would help people expand beyond sort of like a really narrow research focus into actually how we are engaging with this in our day-to-day -day lived existence. So that's a, a little bit of a vision. We'll see how, how it all goes. Um, Deepa, do you want to take over? Yeah. Thank you, Ayush, and thanks for wonderfully putting our broad vision behind Epistemy 9. As Ayush pointed out, we have tried to include equity and access at many uh, individual strands. So it doesn't look very different, but uh, we have to parallelly think about it uh, every time when we think about disciplinary practices and also about different other strands in science education research. And hopefully we'll be able to do that beautifully in next a couple of days. That was our central message for Epistemy 9. Uh, as a co-convener, I would also like to add a few things that we wanted or we planned to do at this Epistemy platform, but couldn't include in this five days program because it is already full packed. But I, I just at least would like to acknowledge a few things that we have planned and we hope to do so in as a spin-off event in next couple of months. So firstly, we'll be doing a spin-off event exclusively for teachers and uh, teacher educators in India in a couple of months down the line. And this event will include further discussions of uh, some of this year's epistemy uh, stands in the form of workshops and panels, which we were really hoping to do um, in person at HBCSE. But uh, of course, when we moved to virtual platform, we decided to uh, make a space for these events sometimes later in, uh, uh, but uh, under as a spin off event of Epistemy. Uh, secondly, there were a few in person workshops that we couldn't conduct due to some constraints, and we plan to host these at HBCS in the near future. So, uh, like, uh, keep an eye on Epistemy website, and you will see some more interesting spin off events that will be posted time to time uh, on our Epistemy 9 website. Uh, thirdly, we uh, have made a web proceeding of Epistemy 9 uh, available on the conference website for now. So if you 
uh, scroll down epistemy 9 uh, home page you will also see a pdf version of our web proceeding uh, which is uh, there for now but we have also uh, we are also looking forward for an isbn proceeding for referencing purpose which will be sh uh, eventually shared uh, with all of the participants and uh, also with all uh, other dignitaries who helped us to organize this uh, science education research conference successfully. So uh, keep an eye again for the ISBN proceeding, but uh, most of the things that you will require for uh, Epistemy 9, all the talks, proceedings, papers uh, are available in this existing PDF copy. Uh, also, uh, a lot of information about the conference scheduling, uh, speakers and uh, their contact information, a lot of it is also available on uh, our website. So you can, uh, Keep, like you can keep looking uh, and uh, both of these document uh, like uh, both our uh, conference uh, proceeding as well as our uh, website is quite an information source uh, throughout for these five days uh, and lastly epistemic conference has been um, a great networking hub for many uh, budding science education researchers in india and worldwide uh, and uh, though we have tried our level best to have this uh, spirit ongoing even in the online conference. We are also aware that uh, many of you will be missing out some uh, in-person interactions with our larger uh, HBCSC community during uh, this online event. So uh, in Epistemy 9, we started with a few new ventures. Uh, firstly, there will be a small post-conference fund which will enable uh, a few conference participants in India for extending um, are the interactions that they started at, uh, at Epistemy. Uh, and they will be, uh, and we are, we are trying to put a call about it shortly on our Epistemy conference website. So uh, please keep visiting our website if uh, you're interested in such extended interactions with uh, HBCSC members after the conference. Uh, there will be more details that will be added on our website about it. But I think this is the first time uh, since the conference moved into virtual space we thought let us uh, at least keep this uh, space and this networking opportunity ongoing through the conference fund. So uh, that was the last announcement in the call. And um, uh, I think I'll just make a few, one or two brief uh, uh, like announcement regarding epistemic schedule as well. Uh, please note that the conference is being uh, designed or planned in two time slots. One is in the pre-lunch or morning afternoon slot uh, according to the Indian uh, local Indian time and then the second slot is a different afternoon or evening times on every day so we do request all the audience to check the conference schedule available on website as some days we start early and some days we start late to accommodate uh, the speakers uh, who are who have joined us uh, particularly from different parts of the world uh, so the conference, if you keep an eye on conference schedule every day, there are slight changes when we start the afternoon session. Uh, so uh, please have a look at it so you don't miss out any session and plan the next five days accordingly. So uh, I think, uh, yes, with all those announcements, I uh, welcome you all uh, on behalf of the Epistemy team once again, and we hope you will have a wonderful time uh, at this online conference. And uh, we'll be starting our first event of Epistemy 9 right at 10.30. So we can take a break of 10 minutes. And our first uh, thing in the talk is, uh, our, first, uh, our first event in Epistemy 9 is a plenary talk by Professor Sarah Talbert. So stay tuned. And uh, we request session chair to start the, pro start the first session at sharp 10.30. So if you want to hang out, you're more than welcome, but otherwise we can take a small 10 minutes natural break and then we can rejoin at 10.30 Indian Standard Time. So thank you everyone once again and uh, stay tuned for the next five days for Epistemy 9.